hello everyone in this video we will be learning about impedance matching okay this is one of the important functions of our middle ear impedance matching the learning objectives of this video is what is impedance and uh, we know the our ear is divided into three parts external ear middle ear and inner ear we will see how inner ear offers impedance and how our middle ear helps in matching this resistance or impedance okay so the middle ear helps in impedance matching so what is impedance it is nothing but resistance okay impedance is nothing but resistance so you can see in the diagram here when the sound energy is traveling from air medium to fluid medium what is happening is 97 percent of the sound is reflected out only three percent is getting transmitted into the water so there's a resistance offered at the air and fluid interface or at that junction which you call it as uh, impedance if the same thing applies here you can see here a person is trying to call his friend who is swimming underneath the water when a person is trying to call him what happens the person inside the water cannot hear him properly because most of the sound energy is reflected out okay so this similar mechanism also works in our middle ear now we'll see how this applies to our ear you can see this is a diagrammatic representation of our ear. This is the external ear. This is the middle ear. This is the inner ear. Okay. If you see external ear is filled with air, middle ear is filled with air, but inner ear is filled with fluid. So when the sound waves are traveling from uh, external ear to middle ear and then falls onto the inner ear uh, without the presence of ossicles, what would have happened is almost most of the sound, whatever is falling onto the inner ear will be getting reflected back and will not be able to hear properly. So this is the impedance offered by the inner ear at the air and fluid interface so there's the inner ear is filled with fluid the air middle ear is filled with air so at this junction the resistance whatever we are getting we call it as impedance so this now we have in the middle ear we have these ossicles okay malleus incus and stapes what will these mechan uh, your uh, the ossicles do is they amplify the sound so the, whatever the sound is coming and falling onto the um, tympanic membrane that will be amplified and sent to the uh, cochlea so that the the pressure whatever the pressure is created at the tympanic membrane will be magnified at the oval window so that it will move the fluid so that the person can hear and the sensory cells can be stimulated within the cochlea so now what is impedance matching so it is nothing but amplification of the sound in the middle ear is called as impedance matching because there is an impedance or resistance created at the inner ear right at the middle ear and inner ear junction there is impedance is created so this has to be matched or overcome by the middle ear so there are two mechanisms in the middle ear which helps in overcoming this impedance or resistance one is lever action of the ear ossicles another one is the hydraulic action of the tympanic membrane now if you see here the lever action of the ossicles now handle of the malleus is 1.3 times longer than the long process of the incus so if you see the diagram here this is the handle of the malleus okay this is the long process of the incus so if you see here the handle of the malleus is longer when compared to the long process of the incus so this is about by 1.3 times longer so the pressure is also magnified by about 1.3 times because of this lever action as we saw in the previous diagram, malleus is the first ossicle and that will be attached to the tympanic membrane. So whenever the tympanic membrane moves, the malleus will move and this malleus is in turn linked with the second ossicle, the incus. Okay, At an angle, a uh, particular angle it is attached. So whenever they move, they always move together and uh, they form a type of uh, type 1 lever. Okay, this types of different types of lever I will be explaining in another video but remember your the attachment or join between the malleus and the incus is an example of a folded type of type 1 lever so what happens is whenever there's an inward movement of the tympanic membrane the second me mechanism by which the middle ear amplifies the sound waves is by hydraulic action of the tympanic membrane here if you see observe here this is the surface area of the tympanic membrane which is roughly around 50 millimeter square and this is the surface area of the oval window which is about 3 millimeter square 
So there's a reduction in the surface area by about 17 times. Okay, there's a, this is a 50 mm square divided by 3 mm square almost by 17 times there's a difference the uh, the size is reduced so what happens is this leads to a corresponding increase in the pressure so for example uh, sound waves of uh, uh, very high velocity but low pressure falls onto the tympanic membrane now what will happen is it is concentrated to a very small area right so area is very small but the force has to be kept the same right so what happens is pressure increases so the pressure drastically increases at the level of oval window because of the difference in the surface area between the tympanic membrane and the oval window almost you can imagine like a conical manner there's a lot of force which is developed at the level of oval window so hydraulic amplification is nothing but a very small movement at a Oh, at the tympanic membrane which has a very large area is converted into a larger movement over a small area in the oval window so you can just imagine a very little bit movement of the tympanic membrane is sufficient to cause a very forceful movement of the oval window so that it will set the fluid in the inner ear into motion so the total amplification or total amplification of sound waves happening by the middle ear is 17 into 1.3. This 1.3 is nothing but the handle of the malleus is 1.3 times longer than the long process of incus. This itself will amplify the sound waves by about 1.3 times. But the hydraulic action is a which plays a major important role here because the size difference of by about 17 times itself will amplify the sound waves by about uh, like 17 times the area difference between the tympanic membrane and the oval window so when you multiply these two we get a total amplification of about 22 times but remember exactly 22 times the sound will not be amplified because some energy will be needed to overcome the inertia of the ossicles when you set the ossicles into motion now coming on to the clinical relevance of knowing about or studying about impedance matching okay whenever there's a trauma uh, there's a post-traumatic uh, ossicular chain disruption whenever there's a head injury and all the ossicular chains might get disrupted malleus incus might get separated so what happens is uh, remember now the sound transmission from the uh, tympanic membrane to oval window normally occurs via ossicular chain but now what would have happened since there's a disruption the sound waves can still travel directly through the air okay remember the middle ear is filled with air right so it can still travel through the air in the middle ear and enter the cochlea at the oval window but what happens most of the sound waves are reflected back because there's an interference or impedance offered by the inner ear so uh, because of this the patient is not able to hear properly so the sensitivity of hearing will reduce by about 15 to 20 decibels uh, when compared to a person who has an intact ossicular chain coming on to the summary of this topic impedance meaning it is the resistance or opposition of a system to the flow of sound when the energy is transmitted from one medium to another medium you're getting some resistance so the magnification of sound to overcome this impedance is called as impedance matching and impedance matching is a function of middle ear and the two mechanisms involved are lever action and hydraulic action of the tympanic membrane